Analysis now with Nader Hashemi in Washington, D.C. He's an associate professor of Middle East politics at Georgetown University. Nader, good to have you on the news hour. After Thank five you. visits to the Middle East since October 7th, what are Blinken's chances of actually securing a desperately needed ceasefire? I think they're very low. I'm very skeptical. Uh, the last time he was in the region and then he left, there was a major escalation in tensions. And I think the core problem here is that um, Antony Blinken and the Biden administration are very much at the core of this problem um, by virtue of their you know, unconditional support for Israel and its you know, genocide, genocidal onslaught against the Palestinians in Gaza. And that's something that Blinken does not want to you know, address fundamentally. He still wants to sort of support Israel unilaterally, but then not deal with the predictable consequences of this horrific violence that we're seeing in, Ga uh, seeing in Gaza that's affecting the region in terms of regional escalation. So I, I would be very surprised if you know, he makes any progress. Okay, but Nader, surely you would think that the US does have leverage over Israel, considering this long-standing relationship, considering the fact that the U.S. has openly said that they don't agree with calls from some Israeli ministers to displace Palestinians from Gaza that are now some being forced to move into Egypt. So why are they not then using that leverage that they surely have? Well, that's a great question. Um, yes, the, lever the leverage that the United States has over Israel and other um, actors in the region is immense, but they refuse to use the leverage uh, because the United States and Israel are in lockstep in terms of their plan for Gaza. They very much want to sort of see, you know, Hamas eradicated um, from Gaza, which most people are now realizing as we're on the eve of the beginning of the fifth month of this war, 27,000 deaths later, that that's becoming an impossible goal to achieve. And in terms of the leverage question, I'll just remind your viewers that in the 2020 U.S. President, President election, uh, presidential election campaign in the United States, when Bernie Sanders, then a candidate for president, raised the question of using the immense leverage that the United States has over Israel, uh, Biden was asked to comment on Sanders' proposed idea that the United States should use its leverage. Um, Joe Biden said it was a ridiculous suggestion. Um, and so there's no um, uh, evidence anywhere that uh, Blinken or the Biden administration is going to uh, establish um, red lines for Israel. And that's very much the core of the problem. See, Blinken and, and Biden want to have it both ways. They want to back Israel unconditionally, but then they don't want to deal with the predictable consequences of that decision. And that's very much why we're dealing with this crisis today. Mm -hmm. Uh, Nader, I, I want to look at the role that Qatar plays in all of this because that's where Blinken is at the moment. But how is it that Qatar has, has been able to play such a pivotal role, it seems, in some of these ceasefire talks? Because as many analysts are saying, for a ceasefire to really come about now, there desperately needs to be compromise from both sides. Uh, well, the answer is very simple. Uh, in order to play a constructive role, in de-escalating a conflict, you have to be able to talk to all of the parties in the conflict. And that's the role that Qatar is performing. The United States and Israel don't talk to Hamas, um, Qatar does. Um, so Qatar has uh, this vision as being a mediator in the region and it's playing a very crucial role as we saw in November when there was a, a temporary ceasefire and an exchange of you know, hostages um, from, from Gaza and in the West Bank. Um, that was all done because of the, you know, the intense in investment in, in diplomacy that Qatar had um, pursued. So uh, that's why they play this critical role. They're absolutely essential. But again, at the end of the day, they're just a mediator. The key decisions are really going to be made in Washington, D.C. and in Israel. And that's where I think the problem lies. Nader Hashemi, good to get your analysis. Speaking to us there from the U.S. Capitol.